This is a scoping presentation for the Vision Blueprint Commercial Regulatory Amendment 27 that amends the Snapper Gruber Fishery Management Plan for the South Atlantic region. We are at the scoping process of developing this amendment. Uh, you can see on your screen um, a graphic show you, showing you the different steps. Um, this presentation is going to give you some background information, reasons for the proposed actions, and how you should submit your comments and by when. This is a time um, where the public is approached for their input and it provides an opportunity for you to make suggestions before the council has made any decisions. First of all, um, a little bit of background. The 2016 through 2020 vision blueprint for the Snapper Grouper fishery is the long-term strategic plan for managing that fishery. Um, it is structured around four goal areas, science, management, communication, and governance. The council began the process of developing the strategic plan in 2012 through the visioning project, uh, and that included lots of outreach to stakeholders throughout the region uh, for both sectors, commercial and recreational. Then during 2015, the council prioritized action items that could be addressed through amendments to the Snapper Grouper Management Plan over the next five years. So here are some of the um, action items that they want to address in this amendment. Uh, split seasons for deep water species, perhaps red porgy and greater amberjack. Um, they want to look at trip limits and step downs and maybe expanding uh, the use of those step downs, perhaps using a commercial annual catch target to trigger them. They want to reevaluate the shallow water grouper closure for the commercial sector, look at fishing year changes in particular for the golden tailfish hook and line component, um, and then removing the minimum size limit for deep water species. Um, I will mention that additional items from the Vision Blueprint are being considered in Amendment 43, which is also um, undergoing the scoping part of the development process. And that amendment addresses red snapper management and recreational um, reporting. So first of all, commercial split seasons. So right now the council has um, commercial split seasons in place for vermilion snapper and gray triggerfish. And the way it works is the commercial ACL is split 50-50 um, into two six-month seasons. Um, and then if there's any ACL left from season one, that can roll over to season two, but there's no rollover from year to year. So the council is interested now in establishing similar or some sort of commercial split season for uh, deep water species, for red porgy, and for greater amberjack. Uh, for red porgy, restrictions were um, put in place on harvest in 1999 to address overfishing and overfished um, the overfishing and overfish status of red porgy. So sale and purchase were prohibited January through April uh, with a one fish per person per day possession limit and then there was a 50 pound commercial trip limit put in place for the remainder of the year. Um, in 2014 for greater amberjack uh, we changed the fishing year that used to start on May 1st now the fishing year, year changed to starting uh, March 1st. And this was done to allow the commercial sector um, greater access to amberjack during uh, Lent when there's an increase in demand um, for fish. So um, I'm gonna walk you through some options um, and this is where the council would like to get input from folks. Um, these are just some options that could be put in place for deep water species. So we could divide the ACL similarly to how it's being done for vermilion and great trigger fish um, and put in place the same sort of um, seasonal length and the same rollover provision um, as well. Uh, there's also the option to divide the ACL into two quotas that are apportioned differently um, than 50-50. So you could choose 60-40 or whatever other combination. Um, and then again, the same type of rollover provision. Or the ACL could be divided again into two quotas, um, not necessarily evenly, and then the season could be uh, of a different length. Season one could be shorter than season two or vice versa. 
Um, what we are wanting to get input from you is whether this would be appropriate for all the deep water species, only some of them, and if so, which ones. For um, red porgy, <clears throat> we have a similar suite of, of options, basically, just to get the conversation started. The first one is similar to what I just went over um, similar to vermilion and gray trigger fish. And, and there is some interest in lining up the harvest of red porgy with those two species because there's concern that there is some um, discarding of red porgy when um, the season's open for gray trigger fish and vermilion. Um, I'll, I should say that um, these alternatives here would necessitate removing the prohibition on sale and, and purchase that is currently in place um, from January through April. So the exact same sort of alternatives for red porgy. And then for greater amberjack, as I mentioned, um, this one's a little bit differently because the fishing year uh, starts on March 1st. So the first option that you see on your screen would divide the ACL into the two quotas, um, into two seasons of equal, equal length. So March 1st through August 31st and then September 1st through February 28th. Same sort of rollover provision, and then the ACL could be apportioned either 50-50 or some other way. Um, the second one on your screen would um, coincide, the opening would coincide with the second season for great triggerfish and vermilion snapper. So you would divide the ACL into two quotas um, and assign one to the period March 1st through June 30th. And then you would have that second opening July 1st through February 28th. Um, again, uh, all of these um, assume that there would still be some restrictions on harvest during the month of April, which was initially um, put in place to um, protect spawning fish. And then finally, the last one, uh, would divide the ACL into two quotas. Um, this one's a little bit different. The, the first one, which it's designed to coincide with the opening of groupers, which is May 1st. Uh, but then you would only have a very short season in the beginning, March 1st through March 31st. And then the second season would open May 1st through the end of February the following year. So just some food for thoughts and your input um, on how to structure those commercial split seasons. The council is looking also at um, trip limits and step downs. Uh, one thing that came out of the visioning project and um, uh, snapper group advisory panel members have discussed in the past is modifying the trip limit for the second commercial season for Vermilion. Um, right now, the, there is a trip limit step down when 75% of the ACL is met, the trip limit goes down to 500 pounds. Uh, so there's there's been some interest um, for establishing a lower trip limit during the second season to stretch things out. And so the council would like to know from you whether this is something that you would support, and if so, what would be an appropriate trip limit? Um, another option that's been thrown out there is perhaps restrict the number of trips per month or the number of trips per week. So that's, again, another um, way to stretch out the season and any other options that you think the council um, should consider at this time. Um, going on still with trip limits and step downs, another thing the council's talked about and came up during the visioning project was uh, whether they should evaluate and tailor management approaches to address the needs of uh, traditional bandit boats. Um, and a traditional bandit boat has, would need to be defined, um, first of all, according to the Snapper Group or Advisory Panel, that would be a vessel that stays out for longer than, than 48 hours. So that is a potential way to define uh, that fleet. Um, should there be aggregate trip limits considered for such vessels or what other management approaches would be appropriate for the council to consider if they were to um, go down this route? Uh, another thing that's been talked about and the council would like input on is to perhaps consider specifying a trip frequency for vessels with golden tilefish long line endorsements. Um, this is a fishery that um, 
commercially, the trip limit for the long line fleet is 4,000 pounds. Um, and it's, it's a very short lived fishery. The ACL is caught in just a couple of months at the beginning of each year. So should the council perhaps look at specifying the number of trips per month or perhaps days at sea um, or add a trip limit step down for the long line sector? Or are there an, uh, any other um, options that should be considered to um, benefit that fishery? Um, the council will also like to um, get input on whether trip limits for the Jacks complex or um, any of its component species would be appropriate. There's been some interest in specifying a commercial trip limit for Almaco Jack. Um, the council would like to know if that is something the public would support, and if so, what would be an appropriate poundage. Um, also specifying an aggregate tri trip limit for the Jacks complex is an option. Uh, that complex includes Almaco Jack, Banded Rudderfish, and Lesser Amberjack. And finally, um, just to throw it out there as well, could there be a, an aggregate trip limit for the Jacks complex in addition to Greater Amberjack? Is that something that would um, be appealing? And again, the council is open to any other options um, that would be appropriate to consider. Um, as I mentioned earlier, another thing that's been um, considered is using uh, what's called a commercial annual catch target. Um, an ACT or an annual catch target is the level of annual catch, either in pounds or numbers of fish, that is the management target for that fishery. And so it's designed to account for management uncertainty in controlling um, the actual catch uh, to, keep, to, to keep it at or below the annual catch limit. Right now, the council specifies um, annual catch targets for the recreational sector, um, but these do not trigger any corrective action. So they don't trigger accountability measures. They're basically just being um, put in place um, as an option for future management of the fishery should the council um, want to use them. But there is the option of specifying ACTs for the commercial sector and utilizing them to trigger some kind of accountability measure or maybe a trip limit step down. So the council would like some input on that. So on your screen, there's a couple of options. Should this be done for all species where step downs are currently used um, or for what species? Um, and then, of course, are there any other options the council should consider? Moving on, uh, another item the council would like some input on is um, should there be changes made to the shallow water grouper closure? Um, this is a closure that is in place annually from January through April. And it was put in place to provide um, protection initially uh, for gag grouper, um, but it's also protecting shallow water groupers um, during the spawning months. In particular, the council would like input on whether red grouper and scamp um, should be con should continue to be included um, in this in this closure. Should there be de different closures for these two species um, and because there's some concern over over their status? And um, we've heard that the current closure is not quite lining up with when they are spawning in some areas. And so the council would like input on those two species in particular. Um, and as you mentioned that this, this action is also being considered for the recreational sector and that's being addressed in a separate amendment, the Vision Blueprint um, Recreational Regulatory Amendment 26. So here are some options and the scoping document for this amendment um, has them kind of it in more detail fleshed out a little bit more, but there's several of them, so I didn't want to include them all on the slide. Uh, there's also there's always the option to retain the prohibition, but maybe exclude one species or several species, and if so, which ones. Um, also, the closure could be adjusted by area to sort of have one of these rolling closures that kept getting mentioned during the visioning project. So, for example. Uh, the closure could start early in the year off East Florida and then move on up the coast um, over time. And then um, there's, 
some interest in addressing um, harvest of these species off of Florida in particular. Uh, when the council was undergoing development of the joint South Florida amendment, which was an amendment that was initiated at the, re at the request of stakeholders to address in particular the needs of species in South Florida, there was a lot of input um, and some of the alternatives and scoping document that accompanies this presentation um, came from input um, from those stakeholders. And they had mentioned perhaps removing or modifying the timing of the closure south of 28 degrees north latitude maybe, or south of 31 degrees north latitude, and basically just to encompass the state of Florida on the East Coast. So options are um, to make modifications for all shallow water grouper species or um, exclude just some of them, maybe black grouper, maybe gag, maybe red grouper and scamp, lots of different combinations there for you to consider. Another thing um, that is being considered in this amendment is making modifications to the fishing year um, for the hook and line component of the golden tilefish commercial fishery. So the rationale here um, is to prevent market flooding and optimize prices, and of course, to ensure that product is available over a longer, longer period of time for consumers. Um, and this is a, a, an idea that came out of discussions uh, through the Snapper Group Advisory Panel. Um, they had suggested initially uh, an opening um, a fishing year change that would start um, around March 15th. Some concerns here um, to keep in mind is that access to golden tilefish is different for different areas within the council's jurisdiction. And that change in the fishing year, of course, is going to have different impacts to different areas. Um, and then also there could potentially be an increase in discards of other deep water species in some areas. Um, so here are some options that the council um, is considering maybe make the um, fishing year for the hook and line component only to begin March 1st, maybe it should begin April 1st or May 1st. And of course, uh, they would like to hear if there's any other options they should be considering at this time. And then finally, um, the last action in this amendment would look at removing the minimum size limit for deep water species for the commercial sector. Here again, this is an action that is also included in um, the amendment that addresses the recreational sector. And the rationale here is these are species that are currently included in the deep water complex, and those are silk snapper, queen snapper, and black fin snapper, and they all still have a 12 inch total length minimum size limit. Um, of course, species in the deep water complex are typically associated with high discard mortality, so this action would, um, it would be in hopes to curb uh, discard losses. So do you think these minimum size limits should be removed? And so that wraps up um, what we have, um, what the council would like input on for this amendment. The timing as it is now, we are conducting, as I said, scoping. Um, we're gonna do some webinars and hearings um, this month and early next month. The council will review those scoping comments and revise um, actions and alternatives accordingly in March. They would review the analysis that we prepare and approve for public hearings in June. The public hearings would be conducted in August. Then they would get that those comments and feedback um, in September and approve this amendment for review in December of 2017. How to comment? Uh, we are requesting that the public use the online public comment form that is available on the website. Um, you can also send in your comments using the um, address on the scoping document to the council office. You could fax your comments at, your, at the number on your screen. We request that comments are received um, by February 10th. And my name is Myra Brower. I would be happy to answer any questions you may have. You can call me at the council office or email me. And finally, this is um, where we're going to be. Um, Coming up January 12th, we're going to have a scoping webinar for this amendment and the Vision Blueprint Amendment 26. Um, on the 17th, there will be a question and answer webinar for Amendment 43, which is um, contains actions on red snapper management and recreational reporting, and Amendment 44, which addresses uh, management of yellowtail snapper. And then we're gonna be on the road 
uh, for a couple of weeks there in January and early February. And you can see in your scoping documents the address of where we're going to be. And we will be taking comment on all four of the amendments that the council is seeking input on at that time. Thank you for your time.